Sissy just said, is there four innings in baseball? Hold on. I said what did you say? a few days ago, I thought there were four innings, but I learned four innings. recently that there's nine, possibly more if it's tied. What the f is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is Unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> Hi, you guys, and welcome to Unwaxed Podcast with your favorite sister, Sophia Stallone. Yes, I decided that she wasn't carrying her weight, so we kicked Sistine out. Um, yeah, our computer is here, just in honor of her presence in the past couple episodes, but it's okay now because your favorite sister is back, and I will be running the show from now on. I have so many good stories. I can tell you all the tea about Sistine when she's not here. So you guys, today we are going to talk about... <laughs> oh, hey. I thought we... I told you you're not allowed to be on the podcast anymore. Don't get too comfortable sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No. I started it. It's okay. The show has finally arrived. Oh my god. All right, we'll start it over. And hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Unwax Podcast with your favorite sisters, Sophia and Sistine. I'm frazzled right now. I just had a great intro. I said I kicked you off. I step out I for two minutes. To do what? Weren't carrying your weight. We set a certain time. We said Must 426. Must a girl share what she does in the restroom, Sophia? I mean, early bird gets the worm. All I Isn't know is you're quote? getting a lump of coal for Christmas, all right? Mm, mm, mm. Well, we wanted to dive right in because I'm really excited that something we did a couple years ago that I've been dying to do again is vision boards. Okay. Yes. Before you get into the vision boards and explaining what they are exactly, I would like to preface with I thought, my mind has changed, I thought they were very dumb. Mm. And I thought it was just another excuse for Sophia to, you know, manifest stuff, write things down, burn them, you know, pray on crystals. I haven't steered you wrong yet, sweetheart. Fair enough. Now, my mind was quickly changed when we decided to recap what we had put on our vision boards. And pretty much everything came true. It was creepy. We did it probably two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. And to give a quick spiel, what we do specifically, there's different versions you can do. Um, I was set. I went out. You go to Staples, wherever it is, get two poster boards. It doesn't have to be that big. Buy a bunch of magazines, get some, uh, what's it called? Tape, scissors, and just you, yourself, and I, and you just cut whatever is feeling you at the moment whether it's like no the, it's you're yeah. explaining it poorly no, it's things it that is. you want for the new year and whether you cut out certain letters to spell words out for example if you want love or relationship or money or getting that job you put out photos and words that would symbolize right. those things and then you have a whole collage yeah. of just, everything you want for the new year just to clarify what i meant when you're going through these magazines you might see a photo that resonates to something that you've been wanting and so it's just whatever you're feeling. Because I know that for me, for example, a couple of years ago, when I did it, on the back, I cut out a picture of just a house. For some reason, I saw this house in this magazine. I'm like, I got to cut it and put it on it. I don't know what it means. but Sometimes maybe you got urges to cut a house. I cut a house into the, the vision board. So I put it on the back. I'm like, maybe this is my dream home. We'll see. I shit you not. I shit <laughs> she shits you not. you not. A year and a half later... I go back, and by the way, when you have a vision board, you don't look at it at all. You're supposed to like leave it, put it on your bed, bury it in the dirt. You don't look at it. Uh, you check it out like years later. I looked at the bottom of the photo and it said Florida, specifically Palm Beach. Tell me right now. I, we never had talked about that. My parents never decided to move. That whole thing was not even in conversation when I decided that. I manifested a great house for them in Palm Beach. You're welcome, Mom and Dad. Very good to me. What did I put on mine? I put... Uh, you made it stupid in the beginning. You put pizzas. Yeah, I put like a horse. I put pizza. I think I just did things I liked. But then, you know, very subtly I threw in there 
relationship and love and skiing yeah that was the creepiest one i had never gone skiing or no i have but it's been 10 years and i cut out a photo of friends skiing because i was like "Mm, maybe i'll go skiing I'm going skiing at the at the new year. Yeah. Like, that, that's was like, weird. It was weird. There's a lot of little things I had on my vision board with like wild romances. Tell me why I wanted to do that to you myself. You did it to yourself. <laughs> the weirdest year of that's dating true. ever. I manifested that. I think also I put a podcast studio before we even decided to really do a podcast. That's true. I had like, literally, I kind of had something similar to this. I swear to if you go back, it looked like a, like a square room with a ton of cameras. And chairs. It was like building a brand, I said, under it. I don't know. So, Sophia is basically (laughs) going to set up this whole scrapbooking day tomorrow. Yeah. We're going to be making new vision boards for the new year. Mm -hmm. And then we'll let you guys know what we put on the vision boards. Yeah. I would like to talk about um, something I actually heard on the radio today. And I was like, oh, maybe this would be interesting to share on the podcast. Sophia and I are a huge fan of Irish exits. Mm -hmm. And um, Huge. 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 Big. Yeah, massive fans. All we do. And I was thinking, you know, with all these holiday parties and gatherings happening, I would just love to hear, I mean, people in this, our studio audience, are you guys a, (laughs) are you guys an Irish exit? Yes, I'm getting, definitely. Okay, so I'm getting one no. Explain yourself, sir. He thinks it's rude. You think it's rude? Okay. Exactly. So that's what someone was saying on the radio. The hosts were split. One person said- 100% 100% Irish exit because you're not going to remember me. If I say, oh, I'll be right back. You're not going to be thinking about, oh, is Gary coming back? Like, you could just slyly dip out. Yeah. Whereas the woman said, no, I think it's rude. If the host invited you, you have to say thank you and goodbye. Yeah. Now, they started pulling up some statistics. Mm. And I thought this was kind of interesting. So studies show every person for one whole year attends at least 25 parties. So you spend, on average, about 45 minutes deciding when you're going to leave until you actually leave the door. Interesting. Now, that saves two years of your life. Two days. Two days. Two, days. <laughs> <laughs> two years of your If you guys two. do Irish exit, two years of your life will be added on. <laughs> Here's what will happen. You'll we save. the fountain of youth. <laughs> save, you would save two days of your life. Two days of your life. <laughs> two days. Two whole days. You cut that out if you smoke cigarettes. It just comes back a couple of days. But you can add two days onto it. But also I read that if you eat a hot dog, you also lose seven minutes of your life. <laughs> we ate some Dodger dogs a couple of minutes, two days ago. Can you believe that? Yeah. Every hot dog takes off seven minutes of your life. Also, then my brain started thinking, what about the people that break records for hot dog eating competitions? Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh, no. They, they better be listening to this podcast and start doing Irish exits. Wait, but I also heard some foods add minutes to your life. Mm, um, what, like I wanted spirulina? To, no, I wanted Kale. to say, like, salmon. Salmon? Why do you say it in family? Salmon. <laughs> salmon. <laughs> salmon. Salmon. <laughs> what, what, what's a, what are legumes? Beans. Beans. Oh, oh, legumes. Lentils. They're like... You know, oh, beans, beans, they're good for your heart. The more, the more you, you eat, eat the beans, more you, yeah. you know, the more, you live. the more we live. But can I say, I, I actually, I think Irish exits are the way to go just because maybe it's a thing that I'm lazy. No, <laughs> like, we're but, good at it. But I'll tell you, we're good at it. But this is what I, this is what I say. If you're like one toe in the water with Irish exit, what I normally do is I beeline direct to the exit. And if I see people I know, I'll say bye to them on the way out. I'll be like, bye. Yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, but see, do you come like up that. with sort of an emergency excuse? No, or I just say just... I'm over it. Oh, see, I don't know why my brain goes straight to lying. No, you can't. Like, I don't know why I think of, like, the worst, worst case scenario. I'm like, ah. My dog is choking. Like, Auntie Flo is happening. <laughs> Gotta go. Like, I'll just think of the craziest things. And they're like, oh, my God, don't touch me. That's so much worse. And that's when people get annoyed is when you have a bad excuse. Because I'll tell you this. You're doing an Irish exit. Normally, when I do an Irish exit, it's either to go home or go to another party. So if you're lying about... Oh, you're going to two parties. You bragging over here, it, Sophia? It says you go to 25 parties a year. So, yeah, I'm going to two different parties. But, you know, I, I vouch for uh, Irish but exit. But I do, I do think that if you're going to Irish exit, I always used to use a funny excuse because... <laughs> Why? <laughs> because... It sort of distracts people from the fact that you're leaving their party and instead makes them laugh. 
and then you just slip away while they're okay. chuckling. I have a question then. What type of party are you referring to? Because if it's a small party, definitely Say no Irish Say if it's a Irish birthday accent. party and there's about 40 people there. Mm. See, I would always say, I have to go home and feed my cat. And they'd be like, <laughs> No, I don't. Leave. I don't. When it's 40 people birthday, I'm not Irish exiting. If it's a group of people at a table at like a day club, yeah, I'm not talking to anybody. Or if it's like a big, big group, yeah, I'm not saying hi. But if it's a smaller group, I don't yeah, know. It's All I'm saying rude. is those two days, I don't, I want them. Mm. I do. Okay. I also read another statistic that you spend. What is it on the toilet? Like how many days of your life you spend sitting on the toilet? I just want to correct you. There's a new study that came out of it. What? That hot dogs take 30 minutes. <gasps> Do you hear that? All right. Hot dog lovers. 30 minutes of your life every time you chomp down on one. But sometimes the glizzy's too good. <laughs> <laughs> the glizzy. You it's get all so it. sexual. Actually, I the last glizzy that I ate, that sounds horrendous coming out of my mouth um i ate it with a fork and knife and no one let me forget that what do you call chicken? a hot dog a, a glizzy, glizzy. okay okay Is i love a- i love that you're confused because i called it a hot dog like a normal human being and they're like it's a glizzy and i was like what's a glizzy that's called a hot dog it, i had no idea actually until i don't even know i think it's a dude thing it's that a guy like thing an east coast thing Okay, wait, also, the other fact that you're looking for, salted peanuts, baked salmon, and rice, <laughs> and rice and beans can add up to 10 to 15. Rice wow. and beans? Well, that's kind of smart. So let's say you have a hot dog, rice you counter beans. it with the salmon, beans, and rice. So every time can you, you eat a hot dog, make sure you eat the salmon, beans, and rice Can you imagine the there, has to be the someone, there has to be someone out there that is, like, logging all of the foods that they're eating to, like, counterbalance the amount of minutes no, that they're, I like, losing, anyone... gaining, losing, gaining. I feel like that would overwhelm me. That would be crazy. I think we should talk about what happened the other day. Yes. You guys. The continuous horrendous stories, the tales that come out of our apartment. This is the funniest story. It never ends. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to just preface this because we almost died. And I'm not even just joking about that. We almost died the other day. Um, and this was pretty bad, actually, that it got to a point where my cousin had to call 911. So yes. I'll give you my POV and then I'll let you take yeah. over. I decide around two o'clock. Oh, God, I'm hungry. Yeah. I got a hankering for a sandwich. I leave. But pick me up some. <laughs> Fix a BF one, too. I leave and I hear an alarm go off and I go, you know, it's an older building. It's probably just a fire alarm and the batteries. Well, down the hall, we heard one. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, I'll let it be. I was gone like 45 minutes. So suddenly I'm sitting on the couch with Ryan. I just got out of the shower. I have no makeup on. I look like ass. Uh, Ryan's on the phone with his boss, whatever. And suddenly we hear the alarm come from the next room over. And we go, why are there two fire alarms going off? Like, what is going on here? Why is our building so shitty and old? Like, no one's alarm is working. Then, ours goes off. And we're like, I'm like, Ryan, go check the fire alarm. Why is it broken? There's no smoke in here. We're not cooking anything. He goes and checks the alarm, and it says carbon monoxide. And we go, what? And he goes, yeah, it says to get out. (laughs) There's carbon monoxide. I'm like, Ryan, shut up. You're over like, you're over dramatizing it. Turn it off. And he goes, no, so if I really think I should, like, restart it it says, it it or says something. call 911 yeah and i'm like he's like i think i should just keep this on or try to restart it and he, i'm like ryan whatever and he restarts it it immediately goes back on and he comes downstairs he goes i i, I think i should like be wary of this i'm like I, i'm by the way me being alone i would have died i'm saying to ryan leave it you're being over dramatic don't call the cops ryan's like i looked online it says put down whatever you're doing and call the cops right now and get out and so ryan calls the cops i'm like ryan that's so embarrassing don't call the cops yeah you don't snitch don't call the cops I'm like, you come snitch. on and i'm like i don't smell anything but that's the whole point of it um <laughs> <laughs> and so he's on the phone he goes hi um i'm ryan i i just read online that a, i the carbon monoxide if it's the alarm is going off i'm supposed to call you so here I am. Here I am. <laughs> the guy goes, um, okay, is are there alarms going off? Like, what's going on? He goes, yeah, I hear other alarms. And he goes, okay, we'll send over someone right now. Immediately, two minutes later, a fire truck comes. So I'm coming back from my walk. Sandwiches in hand. And I see three fire trucks three. outside of our building. 
And I have a video, which we will upload, of me trying to walk up my front door steps with nine fully suited firefighters. Hot. They were handsome. Hot. Like, by the way, I'm not kidding. I wish I was joking. It was like a magic mic show. I'm not even saying that because they were in outfits. It was like they all came Yeah, it was kind of like, stupid. You're it like, was stupid. Like, it was it was really, like, shocking. I'm like, did you guys just pull from, like, a model catalog? Probably. And hire them? So, I tell the guys, I go, I don't know what's going on, but uh, I should probably get my sister. He goes, we're evacuating the building. I'm like, I know, but knowing her, I should probably go tell her because she'll stay in there. <laughs> so, let me go get her. And they're like, well, what floor are you on? And I told him what floor I was on. And he goes, oh, no, no, no. That's the you worst You cannot floor. go to your unit right now. Sophia comes barely out and oh, goes, no. Sistine! And she, I'm not going to lie, you didn't look good. I looked horrible. So this is the problem. So while we're in the apartment building, Ryan's like, Soph, the, the, and there's like three firefighters in the room. He's like, Soph, you got to get out. I feel a little lightheaded. I actually like, I'm feeling the, the carbon monoxide coming. No, it's anxiety. I'm so embarrassed about how I look. I'm like, Ryan, you got to give me like one minute. And he goes, Soph, we don't have one minute. I'm running upstairs brushing my hair. He literally drags me out. He's Sophie's like, trying to look cute for the firefighters when there's an <laughs> actual emergency. They're like, Soph, get downstairs. You're going to die if you don't leave the apartment. He's like, I just need blush. <laughs> Hold on. But I had to cut it. So uh, I worked, like, came out like a wet rat. Yeah. And um, yeah, so... We had a massive carbon monoxide poisoning in our building. But it's a good learning lesson because if you and I were living alone without a male that would have known to check this, no one would have called the police. No, that's the thing is I, that's why I was saying I could have died because I was being so nonchalant about it being, oh, you know, like the building is older and it's everything breaks, everything leaks, like nothing works. And so I yeah. wouldn't even assume I've never called 911 before. So I would have never initially done that. And that's so dumb. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. I know. Definitely. I would It's like, does it, you, it's, they call it, you die in your sleep, carbon monoxide, because you can't smell it. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. I would have had the longest nap in my entire life. Oh my God, Sophia. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Why don't we just system. talk about okay. who we have on today? We have such an exciting guest on that we've actually known personally for quite some time. And this is someone we wanted to have on for a bit, but you know, life as an athlete just doesn't stop. Yes. His name is Jack Flaherty. He is a pitcher for the Cardinals. Yes. Oh my God, I'm doing so well. Uh, (laughs) He is a very successful, rising to the top baseball player. I'm a little bit nervous to have him on because I just found out yesterday that there are nine innings in baseball, and I thought there were four. Sissy, so what? Is that not right? Four quarters are in football, and nine innings that's, in baseball. That's see, that's why I'm a little bit. All right, nervous. um, we'll be right back with him, and I'm actually nervous now to interview him. All right, you guys. So this week we have on a friend that we've had the pleasure of watching. Killing it in the MLB, this 26-year-old powerhouse pitcher was selected by the Cardinals in the first round in 2014 MLB draft. I would consider him one of the best pitchers in his field, and we are so excited to finally have him on. This is Jack Flaherty, guys. (laughs) Yes, studio audience. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we are so excited to have you on. And um, he was just previously slightly roasting me about my dating life, so. Rightfully so. I mean, it's. I think it's. I think it was fair. I think it was. That's true. No, he does. I. I Sistine think. Sistine and I were in agreement there. See, you guys. I think so. You guys I think do... we have some unspoken agreements about your dating life, but you kind of do it to yourself. That's true. You do it to yourself. You're the first athlete that we've had on the podcast. Interesting. That's right. True. Yes. Yes. Well, yes. And so it's you this... have big shoes to fill. How am I feeling? I, I'm the first one. I got to set a standard at this. Got... Well, it's a, what, what size shoe are you? You have no shoes to 13. fill. 13. 13. Those are big yeah. shoes to fill. You're size 13. Okay, okay, the next, yeah, the next athlete has to fill in a size 13. There yeah, we go. 13 and a half. We're, we're trying to set a good standard. We're trying to set a good standard. But so far, so good. Kind of. Because I was getting roasted. Well, I mean, yeah, you're getting roasted. It was, I thought it was fair. You, you brought it up. I, I, it it's, wasn't intentional. That you, is true. No, you know what? The reason why I'm allowing this is because we've known you for like, a while, honestly. That, okay, so when you said 26, I, I hate hearing it because, yeah, I've known you since we were, we're like 18. 18. Is that yeah. crazy? Or even, I think, younger than that. 17. 17, maybe. yeah. Because so we... working on like eight. Well, yeah. I just had a weird flashback. We used to shoot iMovies in my backyard. <laughs> we shot a whole, a whole project. A whole project. Hold on. I was Do you remember? I don't know. I feel so bad, but it was for uh, a school project. 
And we casted you as the creepy stalker yes. in the video. <laughs> of course I remember I that. I you ended up hating the video. Yes. I well, I was there for a good thirty minutes. You guys made me a creepy stalker and I had to I had you guys had me like paint something or like <laughs> Can I do just say, it and I, yeah. it, I was the one editing and putting all the creepy music oh my and God. I definitely was the one that made you look horrible. Yeah, you yeah. put like mist in there, you did the soundtrack of Halloween. I mean you put him in black and white. So it was very eerie. Like, I have blackmail on you. Do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Officially. Well, you have that, yeah, that video would be enough. Yeah, yeah really. So yeah. now um, what I'm going to request is some um, tickets to see your next game, so then I won't release it. Or else I'll put it on big screen well, I was going to say, yeah, nobody needs to see that. No, see? I think exactly. there's like a three-minute okay. three video. Well, hold on. Like... If all else fails in the, your baseball career so far, I think we can maybe add this to your acting resume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so it's been pretty much baseball, like, from day one. Like, did you always know that you wanted to be in baseball were you doing any other sports before that i mean i grew up playing baseball and basketball mostly but mm -hmm. i think everybody around me knew that baseball yeah. was number one i was always like one of my mentors was my basketball coach and i was always leaving mm -hmm. basketball practice to go to something baseball like if there was oh. basketball going on i would miss it and i'd go to baseball right and he always knew and he tells me to this day he's like you know some guys you know eat, sleep, breathe, right. and basketball. He's like, that was you with baseball. Right. Oh, interesting. When did you start playing baseball? At what age? Like, I mean, I was in the house, like, swinging on, like, Wolfle Bat, like, three. Oh, okay, wow. so it was, it was young. in your blood. Like, we were, like, thank goodness I didn't break anything in my mom's apartment. We were, I was, like, three, yeah. and she let me throw a ball around. I'm like, it's because your technique was it. so good. She knew you weren't going to break anything. I don't know. I think old. we just got lucky. I don't <laughs> know. I think we just got real lucky. But it was, uh... Yeah, since so real young, and then like organized. I mean, I guess I say organized like t-ball, like five. Okay, true. And then you go into high school, and was high school kind of like the pivot of you taking it extremely seriously? And you're like, this is what I ended up wanting to do, or is it pretty much earlier than that, like middle school? You're like, Hi. I think I had always taken it seriously. It was one of those things where, you know, as we were growing up, me and mm -hmm. like my best friend, we'd always stay after, and mm -hmm. for us, it was fun. Like we would do extra work and whatnot. Yeah. It was fun, and then come high school. I was still playing basketball and I quit my freshman year like two months in because they were, he told me to go play basketball and like right. just until that was done, then come play baseball. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to mm -hmm. give up right. two months of, of baseball to go play basketball. So for me, that was, that was when it became real serious. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, yeah, we kind of just put everything was there that. Was there a moment or a conversation that you maybe had, I don't know if this was in high school or middle school where someone told you or you just had a gut feeling that you knew you were going to go pro like did you always know it was going to sort of work out or did mm -hmm. someone tell not you not out of high school inspiration really no not out of high school really no i was like people would say it mm -hmm. like oh you got a chance to do this but up until draft day like we had because i was going to north carolina mm -hmm. so we had oh flight i didn't booked. know that that's where i was supposed to go to school oh okay I so i had that. flight booked summer school classes were scheduled okay because they, they made the freshmen go early, like over the summer, mm -hmm. to take mm -hmm. classes and get acclimated. Yeah. So I had flight books, summer school classes scheduled, everything, everything for like two weeks after graduation because yeah. I was ready to go. And the draft was the night before graduation. And up until like my name was called, I was like, oh, I'm going to school. That's so scary. Wow. And so. Oh my That's God. intense. Yeah. Were you nervous about the draft? Like what's the feeling? I wasn't until the day the day of. Okay. The day of, we it was the fact that it all happened because we were on our senior retreat. Okay. Oh, like, yeah. Leading up to it. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was the draft was on Thursday. Right. And. Um, like, what were you feeling when it was coming up then? I was, I think I was so distracted from it. I was just like, I, I was so comfortable going to school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you were fine with it. You were I like, was, whether or not I get it, you yeah. were like, I will take either or. That's so a good, good attitude to, to have. Yeah. yeah. A lot of guys aren't. I was like, I'm real happy going to totally so but yeah we i remember i talked to my agent that morning and he said anything can happen he's like i don't know and oh, they uh. it was so it was like up in the air we drive back and we were supposed to do some rehearsal at school yeah like when we got back for graduation the next day i was like i'm i'm leaving that's when i set in i was like i'm i'm going i'm like going. The, the drafts in like two hours like i'm leaving. i can't do it can't do so when you got called to be um on the carnals how was that a feeling like what was the emotion after all that hard work you were doing i mean you probably spent hours and hours and hours like yeah. blood sweat and tears to get to where you are now so oh God, what was that like being dropped like being yeah, yeah it like was i mean it was shock we were 
having conversation in my mom's living room, like mm-hmm. me and like four other friends, and and all of a sudden name gets called and you see a picture on the screen and we just kind of sat there and like looked at each other like this no wait you you're didn't... so chill about this yeah i, I was well, my, like well, we didn't know what to do i like i like curled up into a ball i was like kind of a, i was in, i was like not like embarrassed position, yeah like, i was just out. like and i went over and hugged my mom and she didn't know what to do. like said it about 10 minutes later when like what? her phone my phone everyone everything was popping off went like off like she had like we had a house phone at the time she had to yeah, unplug yeah. it because it was like it was not stopped it was non oh I would have done backflips. I kind of just too. sat there in a fetal position. <laughs> I was just like, well, it was one of those, like, I can't believe this is yeah, happening. Yeah, right. Like, wow, that's surreal, though. You mentioned yeah. your mom, because I know you've, I've, I've met her before, and you've always said she's a big influence on how your career's been. Like, she's been your number one. That's how our mom is. Like, mm-hmm. she's been yeah. there. Is she been, like, a ride or die with, like, your everything. career, everything? Is she just been your confidant? Like, how has she been a part of? Your the success of your... I mean, she's everything. Mm-hmm. She's, you know, people tell me, people like to say that I work hard and then I see her, like, how she was with her job and I'm like, right. I, I hope I can work half as hard as she would because she's going, I mean, she's going not even like nine to five. She's going like eight to six, comes home, wow. would make my brother and I dinner and then is working after that yeah. and then wakes up in the morning like before us at like five, mm-hmm. makes us made breakfast. She would make breakfast every morning because I wouldn't eat cereal. You wouldn't eat cereal? No. So she <laughs> Why? Had... What, do you, what do you have against cereal? It just, I don't know. We well, had what cereal kind of, one all day. All cereal? I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. My brother would have Cheerios. I was going to say. I was the diva. And you were like, to... I need it. He's like, um, I need eggs Benedict. <laughs> I, need, I need something. I was like, Lots can we get Benedict. French toast or pancakes? Very anything. good. And so she always had to make breakfast oh. up until high school. Okay. So it must be hard though when you're constantly training and you're on the road do you miss her a lot when you're away? Oh, yeah. I try to talk to her all the time. Yeah. That's good. Usually, Moms love that. Yeah. Usually on start day, like if I'm pitching that day, if the night game, I'll FaceTime her and talk to her. That's good. Uh, just to like, just to have conversation, especially if I've missed out on something. Right. But I usually try to. What do you think you did differently than people in high school that got to where you are today? Because I think that obviously a lot of people when they're playing sports, they they want to be different. They want to stand out. They want to have that opportunity that you're having. What do you think that you did extra that got you to the next Even level? Even if it was a mindset. Like like, yeah. Maybe you knew like, did you, you were going to Did you say it. something? Did you do something? Because I always feel like people that mm-hmm. end up in that successful position do one thing or they had this like maybe idea that I mean, I think we, no. I, like me and like our team, like we just, we worked. Like we yeah. worked hard and mm-hmm. it, it didn't matter. Like we would have days where you know, practice might end at five, but we're going home at seven. Right. We're doing anything we could. Mm-hmm. And then carrying that over into the minor leagues and into the beginnings of pro right. ball. But like, I mean, we were going, so we would, during the summers, like we were, we'd go work out together. Yeah. All of us. And we'd like caravan up there, you know, 10 a.m. up, drive up to Westlake. Mm-hmm. And then we'd go sit around and have lunch. But I think we just, it was your team. It was a team effort. It was a say. team effort, and I happened to you just make happen it to, to this point. Some of it was, I mean, some of it's luck. Some of it, you run in the right position. No, it's true. Yeah. Sometimes it's the right timing, and I think that you also have your special abilities. Like you're really, really good at what you do. Some people just have a natural gift. Well, like, I also can... think it's a it's a different kind of drive that you had because you had mentioned before that even when your practice would end, you would stay a couple mm-hmm. hours later because not even training was bad for you. You're like, it was fun to keep it going. It was fun. A lot of people right. don't want to put in that extra 10%. Like mm-hmm. they don't want to, my dad always says, if you're going to be successful at anything, you got to arrive early, stay late and work as hard as you can in between. And that's exactly what you did with your career. So yeah. I think in a lot of ways, yeah, you, you say, you're like, I don't know how it happened. And everyone on my team worked hard, but you worked just like it, 1% it harder. Just, it just, ha- I mean, it, it was, there's a little bit of luck involved. Mm-hmm. There's a little mm-hmm. bit of, I got lucky that, you know, I had two guys who went in the first round like two yeah. years prior, so I didn't have to go anywhere to be seen. Mm-hmm. Like I was a sophomore with these seniors, and there's pro scouts there, and and so it was just like everything. Yeah, they up. see this yeah. little sophomore running. I find that so incredible that the three of you guys were all recruited from the same team, like within this next first two. Something like, you can't. I think it's, you can't. It's, it's just it doesn't yeah. even seem possible. But what I find is so crazy is that I have not seen you in months, and I know that the life and lifestyle of an athlete especially baseball you are gone like how many months out of the year like nine or ten i mean we leave in february and are gone see yeah for spring training yeah. so, where, so how, how do you train right now or? yeah or in fe- when you go to in so february. we leave in february and we go i go to florida for uh, okay. spring training yeah. he'll be probably if we ever go to florida they'll be in the same give area. us a ring 
Yeah, so, we'll be I there. Mean, it, yeah, you guys are you guys are down there, right? <laughs> yeah, we're always down there. But now that you're back, what is like the one thing that you miss doing? Like, is there any place that you come when you come back to LA? Because you're gone for so long. I like going home. Do you like, like doing yeah. nothing? I like, like go. Yeah, no, I like going to my mom's and like I try to go have dinner with her. Mm-hmm. And, like, whenever i can and she'll she'll cook or we'll just hang out and like, totally watch a movie you're like just downtime i don't want to see anyone i don't want to talk to anybody I, well don't get me wrong i love seeing my friends and going hanging out going to dinner and being able to just have the day to do yeah. what yeah. i want but, it's, but yeah because we're in such a rigorous like schedule throughout the whole year yeah right. you're probably mentally exhausted after it's, just like it's nice to come home and be able to to be around my mom and be around my friends and, and it's right. probably nice to sort of step away from your teammates because you're I'm sure around them all of the time I kind of was thinking about what is it like when you're the new kid on the team right because I would imagine it feels like you're a freshman and everyone else is a senior and you're like ooh, are they gonna are they cool right off the bat do you kind of have to earn your you gotta earn it but Mm -hmm. more is it earn your like their respect I think this is so this is what it's yes you feel like the freshman and then there's, but it's a little bit different that, oh, you know, I'm 20, that. I was, I was 21 when I got called up in 2017. Oh my gosh. And I'm around like, you're playing with guys somewhat your age. Like mm-hmm. I think in the level before I was, there's guys anywhere from, tw- I think I might've been the youngest. It was like, you know, 20 like to like 27. To... Yeah. But now you've got grown men, men. Yeah. with families and, oh, yeah. and kids and but how do you like, relate to you know their where they are in life you 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 don't yeah you don't really relate to it you hope to find some common ground on something and eventually it comes down to winning and the more that you go out and produce or the more that you just show that you're working hard right yeah guys are gonna see it and if you work hard and maybe it doesn't maybe it doesn't happen right away maybe you're not like really good right out mm-hmm. the gate if you're working hard, people will notice that, and they will respect you. And they'll respect that you're working hard. Were you nervous joining the team? Because I, from the little I know about baseball, I mean, Sissy just said, "Is there four innings in baseball?" Hold on, before Wait. you came in here. Hold what? on, Sissy asked hold if there on. was four innings. So well, that's I didn't. All, I didn't. I know on. a little. She knows. We have it on video. You're <laughs> twisting my words. I said what did you say? a few days ago. I thought there were four innings, but I learned four innings. recently that there's nine, possibly more if it's tied. She Thank just got go. told that today. Congratulations. But you thought it was four. Where are we getting four from? <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. all there's a lot of four and... quarters and a lot of sports. Okay. Baseball, honestly, for <laughs> so, it's it's hard for me to understand. There are so many different terminology and different point well, scoring okay, things what sport, going what, on. What sport do you like to watch then? Basketball, because it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> How, there's a lot that goes on. Yeah. There's different fouls and every there, there's there's mm-hmm. foul calls. You have everything. Okay, You're just fair. like if it goes in, that's that's What's two points sport? or three points. Maybe um. Maybe something like archery, because it's just like straight <laughs> shooting. Wait, There's can no... I tell you, this is so funny. Um, our cousin Ryan, she was. Uh, this was a couple months ago. She oh my was god! Going on a, I'm no, not... This is funny. She went on a date with a guy. This is not I'm her sports impaired. Who um used to play football, and so my cousin had to get scrunchies and teach her every position because he was kind of expect. She was like, "Yeah, I know football." Uh-huh. This girl had to learn I... in one day the entire lineup. I of watched teams. half a season of Hard Knocks in one night, <laughs> oh trying to memorize the sport. So by the way, it worked. I go on the date mm-hmm. and i start saying exactly what his position does and what he like i couldn't even repeat it today i have no idea <laughs> and um and and i was naming players and i was naming all the stuff that sounded fancy yeah and he was like oh my god you can hang i was like well you know <laughs> so i watch that, that's how eventually, eventually it comes out if I mean, that's the problem yeah. see if there was a second date i was Screwed myself. Well, your your <laughs> yeah. boyfriend played baseball, so you should probably learn a little bit about baseball. He's got to watch it. That's true. He does watch it. He does watch it a lot. He got some learning to do. Yeah. But, I know. But since it's from the little we know about baseball, I know there's a lot of trading and things that happen like that. Mm-hmm. Is it ever get like scary? I mean, like because it's such a pr- high pressure sport. I think reality starts to set in. Like it's set in recently of like the amount of guys that I came up with that are now mm-hmm. on different teams or guys being in the like. This year was, like, guys were in the locker room day of, like, the trade deadline. Hey, you're you're getting traded and, like, no packing way. their stuff up in there. What's the emotions in there? Is it just, oh. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. It's just, like, you're like, all okay. right, like, I, I wish you luck. You say goodbye. Like, I'll see you whenever when I see we play, you. we yeah. We'll talk. Um, and then you get new guys coming in. And you're just, like, you're trying to meet them and get to know them. It, it, it's a. That must be intense. 
yeah, it's weird. And then you, you know, you play with guys, you get to know them. Like I lived with one guy for, you know, four years in the yeah. minor leagues, one of my best friends, and he got traded this past no. off season. Oh, no, one of my not boys. Your <laughs> yes, one of them, it was one of my guys, oh. but it was is for the better of the team. For the team, yeah, I, yeah, I love him. I still talk to him all the time. But. No, but sometimes you have to like put that your feelings aside and go like, okay, this is for the team. Like maybe that's the best for him too, but whatever it is, but it must be just intense. Like, I mean, you can you imagine like us living together. All of a sudden, someone coming up saying, "See, so you're drafted to, to next, England to die." Off. Yes, yeah, you gotta I, go away for a couple see, months. Yeah. Now, the more we talk about um, the sport and, and the whole process of it, the, the more I realize how many emotions they actually put you through. It's literally a roller coaster of feelings it's that you guys endure. I would like to know the feeling of you, look at this word, standing on the mound. I wrote it down in our notes. <laughs> Shut up. Uh-huh. Standing on the mound. Stadium. <sighs> Jack. Boo, Jack. Jack. <laughs> right? You're Mess standing up. up. The pressure, the bead of sweat going down your temple. What wow, are you here. feeling? What are you feeling in that moment? Do you hear moment? anything? I've always am, am, been so are we curious. At home or like on Oh, is there a difference? It, Let's say you're at a home. Okay, okay, game. while home, everyone's like, yeah. They're rooting win, for you. Cardinals. At home, it is. If you strike them out, you win. Well, do you hear the crowd? Do you hear. I don't. I don't. I, um, I don't. Don't hear you anything. hear nothing. I'm like I I'm I'm on there and I I, I can feel the energy and I can feel the presence, Do but I don't I'm not hearing any of the words. Anything the like crowds. I'll I'll play off the the energy in the stadium. Like if it if it's if they're amped up and they're loud and yeah. whatnot, like you got to find a way to use it. Like use it to right. get you going, or you get into oh. a big situations, get into the postseason. Like that's crazy. You use it, and it becomes fun. So you use it to propel you, and you're yeah, like, oh, I mean, like so I want to do better because they're like yeah. screaming, and that's so interesting. I, I feel like the only thing I could compare that feeling to is maybe when you have one too many tequila shots and the room is starting to get like hazy <laughs> and you don't really hear anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everything's this muffled. Is, no. <laughs> okay, whatever. Oh, but, oh yeah. When oh that like do you know one, what I mean? When like, that one hits, and then it just gets. Like fully foggy, foggy, and you're like, you, you're, you're in the room, but you're like, Jack's you like, feel no, like you're yeah, imbeciles. but no, like I'm extra focused, <laughs> so like I know I'm in control of everything. <laughs> no. You're not telling me you're tequila drunk when you're on the mound. No, I, okay, I, I, I'm in control of everything, and, and the the energy is it's so much, it's so exciting, and you know you get yeah. a big strikeout uh, at home, and the crowd yeah. like oh, they crazy. get up, and then you know next thing you know you're you don't even know like you're fired up, your heart's going like this. That's oh. such an adrenaline rush every time you play like a really good game. It's at so home. much it's... fun. So you, and then you come off, and you're like, or you're done yeah. after the game. You've done pitching. You've thrown whatever six, seven innings, and right, you hand it off, and like you don't feel anything until like you're you're done, and you walk inside, and then everything wow. you know, oh just like gosh. crash. And so you I want that. I Do you sound like room. you're really good? Oh, oh yeah, you're high, yeah. lightheaded. You sound like you're really good in a high pressure situation. I enjoy it. I I you work well under pressure. I I I, I enjoy the moment. I enjoy those situations, mm-hmm. like yeah. a big game, intense, like on the road, and it's it's fun going on the road, and then they get loud for right. for them, and then you you get out of it, and then it's silence. Right. And oh you're just like, oh, this is Wait, like so you're at a away game, and it's a really high intense pressure situation. Like maybe it's down to the wire. Yeah. Do you feel whatever it? it is? Do you? Do you have like a mantra or something you say to yourself before you pitch? Or are you kind of – because I know well, you have I, a I hashtag you yes. put everywhere, which is – I Don't think. Don't think. Is yes. that in relation to what you do That's on That's in relation to pitching. Yeah. Um, for me – so it started from – for me, I had to figure out, okay, when am I at my best? Because yeah. it's real easy to – start pitching and like things are going well and mm-hmm. next thing you know you mm-hmm. look up and you see like your era going down or what and right. you start thinking oh i can what's era thanks for asking <laughs> that <laughs> my god it's, it's your earn run it's the earn amount of runs run. you give up every time you pitch oh okay got it do you get that still <laughs> nope she got i got it just keep going it's an important stat for pitchers and you <laughs> and then you start thinking okay if i pitch another two innings then it's gonna go down a little bit yeah. more and then I'll be at here and the next thing you know like you're out of, you've given up two homers and you're okay. out of for me don't think I have to I had to think about okay when am I at my best mm-hmm. what can I repeat mentally mm-hmm. yeah to be at my best to and continue to be in like this state of mind yeah where you know everybody talks about for athletes being in the zone yeah okay what is my zone well it's where I can be on the mound and have everything going on around me, whether it's chaos or 
Silence. Silence or, you know, something happens in the field and just being able to, where I, I tell myself, like, don't, I tell myself it was don't think. Oh. Where I can. Remind yourself. I can stand behind the mound and think about the situation, everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. But I've done all of the preparation possible to then, when I step on the mound and get on the rubber. Yeah. The, I'm learning. The is that the is that the Noted. face? The it's the, the white, the part, white on line. The mound, the white part on the mound. The white part on the mound. You duh, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> and I and I can step on to I can step on the rubber and then not forget everything, mm-hmm. but no, I have prepared everything that I don't I don't mm-hmm. have to think about anything. I can I can look at what the catcher puts down mm-hmm. and I can trust what I'm right. doing and trust. Well, my I instincts. love that because you yeah. can apply it to honestly anything you anything. do. Yeah. But did you come up with this? Don't think hashtag and mentality because you maybe choked in a very high pressure situation and you did think and you messed up. I I think it, it came from like times of really easily like losing myself mm-hmm. on the mound and when I if I struggle or whatnot I can very easily um overanalyze mm. and I was thinking so about, you overthink yeah so uh, do I yeah welcome it's, to the it's club real easy to it's do really fun but you go and you go and do something you screw something up it's really easy to overanalyze and yeah think, yep, okay did I me. really do something wrong yeah or did I just mentally need to get back to where I need to be yeah well especially for you guys because I think that you have to bounce back like you can't you don't have time to short memory right you have short to have memory, a short memory because yeah. if you're if you've messed up a pitch you're like over analyzing that one pitch like maybe it didn't it was a foul or whatever it was or if like your best friend gets injured i'd be crying on the mound <laughs> just, you and know. you can't think about that no it's true your best friend what are you talking said his best friend playing on the team with him you got traded she's saying if, if somebody got hurt it, if someone got hurt you gotta but he wasn't tra- ignore tra- was he traded because he was hurt no he no was... that's just a hypothetical oh, oh. A hypothetical. <laughs> sorry I, 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 i'm overthinking <laughs> don't hashtag yeah. don't think <laughs> no yes it, yes it comes from knowing why knowing why you're good and, and yeah. trusting that and knowing like I went back to high school okay what was on my what right. was on my mind when I was in high school and pitching right. and it's literally nothing uh, like okay. you ask somebody what were you thinking when you did this I don't know it, it no. happened like it just right. it happened things happened way too quickly and so I went back to high school mm-hmm. you know what was on my mind yeah Blank, blank dots. No. So now being on the team, what would you say? I just thought about this. What would you say is your greatest weakness and your greatest strength being on the team? Like, what do you need to work on? Do you think? What do you think that you add on to the team that's valuable? Um, mm. I would say I add on to the team like the I'd say the love and support I have for mm-hmm. my guys. Like, I'm gonna push them. Okay. To that's because I like I know how good certain guys can be, mm-hmm. but I'm also always paying attention. Like, I'm not. I pitch once and then I take, you know, I'm off for four days. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I pitch again. So in those four days, like, I'm working hard. But then when the game's going on, like, I'm watching, listening, paying attention. Maybe pick up something that somebody's doing that one of my pitchers is, you know, they're they're doing something. I can have a conversation with them or or do that. What do you think is something you need to work on? What I need to work on? So when when I pitch, I kind of toe this line of, going like being crazy mm. and but like uh, being like an under control crazy is the only okay. way yeah and yeah I, and I, I pitch very well like on high that functioning line. crazy yeah pitching. and i Got and it. when i'm right on that line i pitch very well but i can cross over it and mm. what do you consider crazy as a pitcher is it like yeah, what do you doing like a, a like a screwball like a curveball no, 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 no. Blue? like me, like oh, mentally God. or like if you I, know what you're yeah, roasting you're... me you're just as bad <laughs> that's, that's a throw that's a throw you call it a curveball curveball screwball like is what he's like saying at all but no it, isn't it like maybe they, they're telling you to do a certain thing and you're like i want to do my own thing he's talking mentally oh, oh, oh. not physically oh. yeah more more like um you know you you can you can you can like pitch with emotion but like you can't be emotional so if i'm on the mound like getting like i'm actually pissed or frustrated i have to come out of the game and i'm pissed and frustrated and then i show it too much now it affects everybody else because they're like you know you can get looked at as whether it's selfish or whatnot like right obviously you're passionate but if i can take that like frustration and like channel it the right way then it's good if it goes the other way then we we're in problematic situations. Have you really like, slammed your mitt down? Uh, yes. Do you, do you yes. get fined for doing stuff like that? I've never been fined. But you could, like, something. I'm sure the team could. Have you hit fine. someone in the head? 
Not on purpose, but I hit someone in the head this year. Yeah. Did you? Oh, did they get a concussion? No, Why you uh, sound so excited about? No, that? no, <laughs> I'm shocked. That's scary. Like I'm, you hit someone in the head. Like so it was. A, it was a. It was such a weird feeling. I was pitching very well, and I just threw one pitch, and it went just. And I right when it let go, I was like, I was. I went in. I just crouched down. I was like, oh, man. oh no. Oh, they're wearing a helmet. They, but yeah, did they walk, walk? Did they walk to the first base? Oh well, yeah. So it was. Or it was. It was a guy, uh, Jonathan India, and I felt. I felt bad. Send he got up. He got up pissed. I I tried to talk to him, but he got up pissed. He oh, was no. mad. Um, <laughs> I understood it. I, I get yeah. it. I know he wants to get hit in the head. I couldn't yeah. imagine he'd be happy. No. No. He was. He <laughs> He's was. Like, Thank hot. you. He was hot. He was pissed. He was like, kind of yelling the whole way oh, down no. to first. And is he like an vet kind of? No, guy? he was a rookie. Oh. But he he won rookie of the year. Props to him. He's a really good oh, okay. player. Um, I think I saw him a couple weeks later, and I was like, "Are you like?" You Are you good? good? Like my bad. Like I and yeah. he's like, I'm, I was like, I'm okay, that's nice. Okay, I would have if, if he was still me. I would have said that was intentional. <laughs> oh my god! That was, that was <laughs> Actually, Sophia. I planned that. No, I it was it was one of it just yeah. And then you then I was like, I don't know about nervous to throw the next pitch, but I'm like, you get this weird feeling of yeah, like, yeah, you I'm don't like, want to do that again. Yeah, you I kind of and I can feel it right now, like a little bit shaking of just like, oh. do your hand shake? I don't. I oh god. I've only had my handshake on the field one time, and it's because my contact fell out, and I had to put a new one in. And I'm like, you have contacts too. Yeah. They're the wor- how do you do? And yeah, yeah, what do you, do you in pitch a- with one eye, like that. No, think no. about oh, wait. Oh, okay, what you, what, what? The, the contact falls out of your eye. You don't catch it with your finger. You, you yeah, I have to go get a new one. They'll bring one out to me, and I, I had to put one in on the mound. And, Stop. And I'm like, I'm like this, like trying to get well, it. Well, because you're my adrenaline, eye. and you're like, oh yeah. shit, I can't oh see. Oh my god! And if it folds, like, you're like, have you, you ever yeah, tried to folds. pitch without your contact? I couldn't see anything. I could. Yeah, I, would, I, I barely too. know that you guys were here. Like oh, I know it was you. No. But... Are you nearsighted then? Yes. Yeah. So am I. Is it hard to date on the road? Um, <laughs> I, it's in general it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming you're gone for you're gone from the middle of February. And you leave her on Valentine's Day, which All does long not distance. go over well. Do families leave on Valentine's Day? So many How girls will heartbreaking. Hate you for that. that is triggering. So you do you have to celebrate on, on the thirteenth? That's so oh, lame. Dang, it doesn't count. You, uh, it's like you leave either right before or right after, mm-hmm. or sometimes right on. That's usually around the date when it's like, all right. And then would married families then travel with you guys? Sometimes they'll go on the road. So if we go to Chicago, I hate hotel rooms. No, thank you. What? I couldn't go out with you guys. It would be a lot. But think about it. Would you want to stay in a hotel room every single city? We're like, it's not about the it's place. It's about city. the company. It's not every city. If we go to Chicago, <laughs> families will come. God, you brat. <laughs> He's like, I hate room service. <laughs> well, I love room service. But. I mean, they, it's they, they'll come on the road, and we go to a nice city, and they'll yeah. hang out. And they get a nice steak. And you go out to dinner, yeah. and you have a good time. Okay, so but you've since you've been in the you've been in relationships. You haven't been in relationships like both ways mm-hmm. what would be like the perfect type of person to date if you were having Tread very lightly on this question no no i'm saying like <laughs> what type of personality does someone need to be to handle someone that okay, is, that's so always the on the road beat? that's yeah. always on the road from what i've from what i've seen from people that are able that like make it work is yeah. they're very independent mm-hmm. and are okay with somebody being gone a lot yeah or, and i mean we'll go to team dinners and whatnot and like you got you have to be able to be trusting like hey we're going out to dinner right we're gonna go we're gonna go grab drinks tonight or something right, like that. right yeah there has to be a lot of trust. and we're There's in a, di- a, lot we're of in a different there. city and like you know we're in chicago we're right, going out right. to dinner as a team and potential hose in every area code is the the catchphrase that's that's the stigma <laughs> with athletes it's it is. is what it is but then you know you also have to be okay with i'm gonna be gone from yeah one o'clock until right. the game ends at 11. That's a long day. So you, so you really you get need yeah, a true nine to five gal. No, Someone you, that is preoccupied throughout the entire day as you well. You have to be preoccupied, but you have to be okay. Like, yeah, yeah, if yeah. You, you, it can't be. You have to be flexible. Yeah, it's like okay, like I, I'm sorry, I have to go to the field today from one, and I'll be back at a, like eleven, or you can come to the game, hang right. out, do whatever you want. The game's gonna end at a le- at we'll say ten thirty. I'm mm-hmm. out of there by eleven fifteen. Yeah, know, home by. I wouldn't say 11, 4, 11, 11, 30. Right, right. And then it's like, if there's a game, like, the next morning at 10, like, okay, I got to go. Right. right. So it's just somebody who's independent is very, like, confident enough in themselves and trustworthy. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, is the key to making it work, then, 
like a lot of communication. Communication is very important. Yeah. And just communication and understanding. Yeah, trust. Because also for us, we have to understand that it's not all about us. Like, yes, we mm-hmm. are going through high stressful, high pressure days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other person has has stuff going on too, and like there something may have gone on in their day where it's like that you missed. And right. Like, oh. And maybe and mm-hmm. maybe and the the biggest thing that guys say whether it's in a relationship, like whether they have a family or not, is trying to be able to separate, you know, the field from home. Okay. So whether it's like the drive home or, you know, the bus ride back to the hotel, being mm-hmm. able to leave the field there, which is a yeah. hard thing to do because yeah. You, yeah, t- yeah. you go home and you want to think about it and you want to keep going and now you're frustrated right. over yeah. maybe you had a bad game or the team lost and now you're frustrated and now you take it home yeah. and now you snap on – them. You snap on See, them. See, what I'm hearing is it might be easier to be single during season. Just to avoid. <laughs> all, I, this is just my point of view. I'm it's, saying this with no free not, knowledge. But, but, okay, but we neither have no one knowledge is easy. Of anything neither, with... one is, neither one is easy because then you're. But so, so you like to be in a relationship though. I I've done I've done both and yes. when you're in a good relationship like it's really, it's really nice to have. He's in a relationship or not right now. I I. Why, yeah. Sophia? You're asking such tough questions. <laughs> I'm asking general questions, by the way. Yeah. Okay, very wh- general. What? Wh- okay, go ahead. Um, I'll s- I'll go back to my question. Well, Ignore okay. hers. Okay, I would say I'm that it's, it's easier to be single because I feel like I would do the same thing if I'm not around that person. For me, I'm very independent, and sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind, and I wouldn't think, "Oh my god, I'm supposed to text them." And uh, check in on them and all the stuff. And then they get insecure. I totally get that. So why do you prefer sometimes when it's really good to be in a relationship? Do they travel to meet you? So like, you, how do you when, accommodate I mean, that? When you're in a good one, like, they understand, like, yeah, when you go to the field, like, I'm not carrying my phone around the whole time. Like, right. I may not talk to you for right. a couple hours. And then the game goes on. Like, that's three hours. I'm not by my phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, spring, like, spring training days, it's like 6 a.m. till 2 Mm-hmm. So, it's not so as the bad. schedule's completely changing, but yeah, then you have the whole afternoons. But they come visit, you hang out, you're able to get that time, you're able to spend, you know, four or five days together, and yeah. maybe they mm-hmm. they stay, maybe they go on the road, um, and you're able to just spend quality time as long as the person is like understanding of your career and understanding. Yeah, of, sometimes of what's you going can't on. really help it. Yeah, and maybe they think it's. Yeah. it's I feel like I could be wrong as well. But I feel like someone in your position, they would almost judge you for not doing that. And you're like, no, it's literally my job. I can't help my hours and I can't help the amount it, that I It's hard to be understanding though with somebody else. Like, but oh, you're, being, you... you're being so sympathetic for seeing the other side. Yeah. Okay. If, if you were, you know, if you jump into a relationship with somebody and you don't know too much about like the sport and you're like, oh That's my God, true. this guy's gone from... They come visit and like you try to explain, yeah. I'm going to be gone from one until... 10 30 tonight yeah mm-hmm. and like well, what am i supposed to do for seven eight hours what am i supposed to do for six hours until the game yeah take up a hobby i don't know mm-hmm. like knit that's a lot of but that's a lot of time to yeah, figure out time. okay what do i do right that's true. right right oh right, well we'll pivot away from girls i can see you're sweating i'm just I'm not, no i'm not sweating <laughs> no, like no, I, it's, no. it's not an <laughs> easy <laughs> thing to do you're actually answering it beautifully and the and the why and like the wives like they'll have their they have their kids that they can that they yeah, that's nice. Do you have any crazy stalker fans? Yeah, I was gonna ask. Do you have any crazy stalker fans? Yeah, have you, do you have a so maybe even if it's a few DMs? Maybe like, if that's it's a girl a or a guy. Bit. Like, have you ever had someone just come to every single game or your hotel that just no? Says I love you. Oh, Jack. That's so nice. Never, never had anything like that. How does it feel? No, it. I mean, it's it's. <laughs> Let us know. Let it's us know. Nice not having, what a nice what life. Mean? Not to be. We feared. have some crazy you guys have had oh, stalkers. Crazy stalkers. No, no, we have like severely bad. I, I'm actually talking. I don't know if we're gonna cut this or keep this. I'm actually talking to um, detectives right now about one of my stalkers. It's so bad. Well, I, I didn't he know used this. to stalk me, but now he's resorted to Sistine. Yes. Unfortunately, you're very detailed. Sir. Also, screw you. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. But I didn't that's know nice. you guys. No, we, oh, I've never bad. had any stalker or like no, like crazy not things. real like stalkers like showing up places. Right, like coming to every hotel or like yeah, whatever that is. Maybe like sending dms to other people like mm. trying to be crazy and start some stuff that's weird. okay yeah that's pretty loco yeah, yeah. i don't love that no crazy like that. enough on that end but nothing yeah 
so what are you looking forward to for this upcoming season? In what this do upcoming you, year. In this upcoming year. Yeah. yeah. What's your New Year's resolution? What's your what's your goals? goals? Wow, we're goals. so good at our job. <laughs> <laughs> we're so good at this. I don't New Year's resolution. I mean, it's the same every year. It's to try to read more and has it does it Well, happen? you're shut, Hold on, you're, you're talking to the, the right, right place. Club. She's got a book club. I got a book club. You got a book Booker? club. Yeah. I have a I have I I've was started. talking to someone about this to yesterday that I have like I brought home from St. Louis like five books. I was like, okay, I'm gonna read four of these by the time the mm-hmm. season starts. I read, I've read one up to this. No, you point. Just it's do twenty pages a day. You gotta just do it or ten pages a day. Start at small. night, in the morning, on the bus, no anything. Sophia no, is true. crazy. I'll walk in her room at seven a.m. and she's reading. I'm like, Sophia, I read. I gotta watch Netflix. I gotta three books a month. Three a month. Yeah. Well, now I've kind of committed myself to it because of the book club. I try to read three, and then I review the three, and then I go on to the next. But I do have a book I feel like you would really like if you like not fiction books. Mm-hmm. Relentless by Tim Grover. I read that one. It's a great one. Oh, oh. that's a that's a great one. He has a new it, one. It does he? Yeah, it's a new one called Winning mm-hmm. that I have I currently that. sitting on my table wow. at home. See, I like that because I the like the student that... becomes the master. <laughs> well, no, but I, He's it's, schooling you on both. It's a great book because it's all about mindset and having mm-hmm. that no bullshit, like yeah. no excuses. You know, yeah, my friends point out the first chapter of that book mm-hmm. is called Don't Think Relentless. Yeah. Oh my god, that's, that's a right. sign. I didn't know that, but he that's... pointed out like after we were. He he read it, I don't know, a year ago, and he yeah. opens it, and he's like, he sent me a picture. I was like, How oh, funny. That actually makes sense, because that's kind of basically your entire, like, who you are. I mean, mm-hmm. the entire first chapter is all about, like, don't overthink, just do the job, get into it. Don't, like... I like that you read books that sort of you can actually apply to your day Try to, life. a lot of mental yeah, books. Yeah, mental books. Or people who have been through things. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm a, I'm more a fiction fantasy person in love. So you want some romance novels? Definitely got you want some absolutely murder not. novels. I got you. So you want some also so erotica? You're murder, you're we got the, some of those too. <laughs> <laughs> you're the murder novels, and she's. The I was gonna rom- make a the rom com. I was gonna make a joke saying that like no, I because I said you could apply to your books to your life, and I was like I can't. Oh, you oh because the ro- yeah I got what you're I I saw it. So your goal is just to do exactly as you've been doing and read more books. I mean, and- it, it's you're just getting better each and every day. Like what can I do to get 1% better every day? Okay. Whether it's, I don't know, reading it, I don't know, simple things. Well, you're bettering yourself I like as it. a man. That's and I highly suggest, if you want to join us, we're going to make vision boards tomorrow. So yeah, if you, if you want a scrapbook with us. If you want a scrapbook with us, you can really, do, yes. Do. This was so much fun. Yeah. Thank you thank so much. I feel like I learned so much about you, about baseball. I hope the next time we hang out, maybe we can like, Play Wii baseball, watch bench warmers or something mm-hmm. in that nature. Because that's all he wants to do is <laughs> yeah. watch everything involving baseball. I, just, <laughs> I think it makes We're sense. We're really though. excited for your upcoming season, honestly. Thank I'm you. I'm supporting you. I'll make a poster. And the fact that you came on Unwax today, we didn't even think you would come. So we're so stoked yeah, to have you here. No, you're one I of our favorite it. guests. And I actually mean that. So Yeah, I seriously, this is fun. And you can find him at, at Jack Flaherty on Instagram. Anything else? I got nothing else. Perfect. Hey, Watch him me. stand on the mound, guys. On the rubber. On the rubber. It, with eight, nine innings. With not eight. Duh. Really? We go to eight after everything? <laughs> oh, now my now God. We're failing. You gave, her, you, gave, you gave her crap for it. I know. I, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. We will see you next Tuesday. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.